In this video, we're gonna talk about using AI to relight your video footage with switch light. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible, Blackmagic and Atomos. And now back to the video. What's up, I'm here with Hoon from Beeble, uh, which makes switch light. So Hoon, tell me a bit about uh, switch light. Yeah, so switch light, it's basically an AI lighting for filmmakers and it lets you change the light after the shower is taken. Yeah. So at post-production. So basically it's like having infinite lights for free. Yeah. So let's explain how this works. I think some people will recognize this footage. Mm -hmm. It's actually an AI generated footage using Sora. I just picked this footage because I want to tell you that it even works on the AI generated images. Okay. It doesn't have to be a real footage. But what we're gonna do is change the lights. I and right now, what is happening in this computer right now is we are relighting him in real time. As well. And What's this is based on the environment of this, yes, this exactly. video we just loaded? Yeah, exactly. Is this a, what, what is this right now? A video, a photo, a 360 photo? Or? It's a 360 photo, okay. but it's a special type of photo called HDRI. It's called High Dynamic Range Image and it has the information about light. Mm. So right now what's happening is every pixel in the HDRI is working as a light source. Mm. So it's doing the relighting. Okay. Okay. And it's also working as a background. So we can change the HDRI. It looks as if this person is in a completely different environment. So you can basically think of as having a LED virtual production wall, mm. but at like a hundred times less cost. So that's yeah. what we're trying to do. How do you capture the HDRI images? What do you need for that? Right now, the HDRIs, we just download from the internet. So there's a website called polyhavens.com. It provides like thousands of well-made HDRIs, but sometimes it can be very hard, difficult to find the HDRI that you want to. Okay. So in, in that case, we have another solution. There's something called light map extraction. And what we do is starting from an image like this here, this is the background plate of a very like, you know, nighttime scene and then we can generate a full 360 HDRI just from a 2D image. So if you want to use this as a background plate, you can just generate the HDRI and use this source to light the entire scene. Right. And does this work with uh, photos or video? It only works for the video, I mean for the photo. Okay. But uh, we're working on the video solution as or well. Or you extract the frames and yes, process exactly. the frames. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then what is happening to the actual source video? How is it able to okay. relight the, the person? What we're doing is actually something called de-rendering. We're trying to extract all the information from a 2D footage so that we can replicate him or the actor inside a 3D rendering engine. Okay. So for example, we're first extracting the 3D geometry. This is something called normal map, and normal map depicts which direction each pixel is looking towards to. So for example, red, it means this way, green, it means this way, and blue, it means this way. Okay. So if you have this information, when a light is given, you can kind of calculate how the shadow is going to be. It's going to be bright, it's going to be dark, and stuff like that. And also, this is something called the albedo map. So just using a 2D image, we remove the background, and our AI extracts something called albedo, which is the normalized light of the original footage. So you can see in the original footage, there is the very hard shadow on the left side of the nose. But in the albedo, all the specular heights is removed. So it's looked like how it, he would look like in a very flat white lighting. Mm -hmm. So it's these types of passes that we extract from the footage, just the 3D footage. And then we use this to put him himself, put him in a 3D environment. This is how everything works. Uh, I just want to show you one more thing. Yes. Uh, we can also add the light. So for example, let's say we want a more controllable lighting session. Increase the yeah. intensity and move this around on him. Yeah, look at that, that's awesome. Um, now, also, you change the background here, but what if you wanted to keep your same scene, but you just wanted to just adjust the lighting in your scene? That's actually a very good question. Um, many of our customers today uh, ask the exact same feature. It's actually very easy. You just have to skip the background removal part. Easier than what we just saw. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah, but I just didn't add the feature uh, inside the front end. UI yet, mm -hmm. so it's going to be added like very soon. And yeah, I mean, so w where do you see this going in the future? I mean, uh, we're talking about using AI for relighting. That's like mm -hmm. a very practical application of AI. Mm -hmm. where, do you, where, do you, where do you think this is going? So I think many people are very afraid that AI will like kind of replace their jobs, but I don't think that's the case, at least what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I think our AI, the, actually the switch light AI, it's going to very, very be powerful to actually help the artist to improve their workflow. So what we're trying to do is not like text to video because they, I don't think artists will ever want to do that. Artists want to want to pick up their camera, shoot, 
and then maybe like improve a little bit or like change the background and put work from the footage. That's what this should be look like. And what we're doing is we're kind of enabling the LED virtual production that only like the super expensive budget uh, guys have. Like the Mandalorian guys had with the volume mm -hmm. that like Disney had. But we're gonna try to build something so that it's so easy, maybe even for like a middle school student to just pick up their iPhone, do the camera tracking, but it, he doesn't have to know the word camera tracking. Right. Change the lighting, change the environment, and create a very amazing storytelling content. That's our goal. In a very minimal set or... In, a, in their living room. Is there sort of a minimal quality you need in the source video in order to get a good uh, output with the lighting? That's a very good question. Um, so we collect all of our data set ourselves. Even works on a very harsh lighting, but the best setting we recommend is the just flat white light because that way we'll have the most information from the 2D footage. Mm. And it's very hard to like, you know, extract the information that is not there. So it's very important to, for the footage to have like the very visible flat white lighting. Mm. So, I mean, do you feel like this might shift how sets are lit in the future where it's like, oh, maybe we'll just go with a softer, flatter light because we'll be able to tweak it later in post? Yeah, so that's what I dream. Uh, everything, I think AI is gonna change everything. Basically, artists want to deliver their content as fast and as easy as possible without spending tons of money. Mm -hmm. And I think a very good way to do that is doing maybe everything in post-production. You know, I know that some people say like the IC VFX, in-camera VFX, mm -hmm. it's very important, but that stuff is very, very hard to do to, you know, make it work. But if everything can be done in the post, the shooting, maybe, okay, let me give you an example. Yes. So right now, we also extract the depth map. It's in, it's in the other demo over there, right. but it's not shown here. But if you have the depth map, what you can do is change the camera view also. Uh, okay. That so. means it doesn't have to be just switching lights. It can be switching camera views. How much movement can you have with the camera and the, what the depth map creates? So right now it's only like, we only create 2.5D because we only okay. extract the 2D two depth map from one view. You can only change the camera based on the existing camera movement. Mm. But what we're working on, it's going to be very fun this year. We're trying to extract the full 3D geometry. Let's say you have like two iPhone cameras set up in a room and then mm. it's going to capture you. It's going to be synced. If these two cameras are going to go into input as our model, it's going to actually, the model is going to extract the very accurate 3D geometry. If you have this, you can do all sorts of like crazy camera movements. Yeah. So like in this case, if we were, were doing this interview and if we had like two iPhones, we could yeah. later move the camera. You can make the drone view out of it. <laughs> Maybe have 360. Yeah, this, exactly. But still maintain the kind of quality and uh, sharpness that we're seeing right now in, in the footage. Yeah, uh, so our model is right now very optimized for humans. Mm -hmm. So that's why our normal map, and it's just uncomparable with anything out there. For example, like DaVinci Resolve, they do the lighting. But they, if you compare the normal map, I don't think they even have the normal map, but if you compare the quality, it's uncomparable. Because what they're doing, it's just for general objects. But right now, we're, since we're focusing on human, we can like kind of like focus and extend the quality like the maximum. Mm -hmm. And that is still our goal, even when we extend to 3D. That's our goal. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get into this? What's your background? So I'm just an AI researcher. I worked in a company called Prafton. It was like, you know, PUBG, they make Battlegrounds, okay. uh, but there I was working like to create like voice AI content uh, products like text to speech, but and vo voice changer. And I worked on this project to you know make a content creation platform, something like that. And I wanted, I really wanted to do my own startup. So when I left the company, I had to, like, I had this unique skill set of being a, I'm a very good AI researcher, mm -hmm. but at the same time I kind of knew what's important, how is important, how fun is to be to do something for the content creators. So that was my passion and what, what I did good. <laughs> and then I found out that like the lighting was no one actually was actually working on this problem. Mm -hmm. But I thought this was kind of like uh, maybe stupid because lighting is so important in every content creation. But not many AI startups recognize this, not many even the big startups recognize this. So that's why we just pop it. That's yeah, really exciting. Yeah. And yeah, people that want to use switch lights, uh, yeah. what's the uh, status of it right now and options. Oh yeah, uh, that's very exciting. So actually yesterday we launched the open beta. Nice. Okay. So you can go to our website, beeble.ai, and can download the software and use it right away. It doesn't support the enterprise plan. So basically it's not going to have the command line interface. It's not going to have the new plugins. It's not going to be like fully offline and you, you would still need to log in. 
but still it's going to have everything that you see right now. The okay. standalone program it's included and you can do anything you want. You can upload your footage. So that was where you out. upload a video file, mm -hmm. um, upload an HDRI image, relight and you could export yep, your video. Exactly, exactly. Right. And uh, there's a feature that I didn't mention. All these PBR maps, it's actually, what is it? Standard materials. Mm -hmm. So you can just import it into Blender, import it into Unreal, and then you can use the already set up 3D environments in the Blender and Unreal Engine to do relighting or shoot the oh, you can whatever you want environment to in Blender yes, Unreal exactly, and exactly. bring it into your footage. So I think you really should try the demo over there. Okay. What we're gonna do is like take a picture of you, and then we're going to create the 3D geometry out of you. And then using that geometry, we're going to create a VFX shot, a really cool one. Okay, yeah, we'll do the demo. Yeah, let's do right. it. Over okay. on the and X. then yeah, tell us what you're what you're doing. Okay, so yeah. what we're doing is I'm just gonna take a picture of you. Do I need a pose or anything? Or oh just... yeah, you should do a, like a really cool pose, like a fighting pose. Yeah, exactly. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> I got this picture, and what we're gonna do is use switch light to extract the PBR materials and. On top of that, we're also going to extract the depth map. Okay. So the depth map I was mentioning over there. Mm -hmm. And since we have that, we can right away. So this is the, your original image. And this is the 3D geometry that we extracted right away. And then you can see how everything is like very aligned. And right it's now- It's a good job too of the figuring out body and separation when it's pretty, there's really not a good, a good separation of the image. Oh yeah. So uh, let me play this. Oh, uh, that's cool. All right. So the lighting and shadows, oh. it's all physically accurate because it's using the you know, <laughs> actual 3D. Uh, that's awesome. And yeah, I mean, the details in... This is running in real time, by the way. So okay. we're using the EV renderer in the Blender engine. But if we switch to Cycles, which is path tracing, it's going to look much better. Okay, so and then that, that's the point when we go, the camera moves Yes, far exactly, kinda... exactly. We're now changing the camera movement. That's what we're doing. So if we move too far, it's not going to look perfect. Right. But if we... We can move you get enough, bit. Uh, yes. a, a bit of a shift of perspective. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Jun. I appreciate the time. Thank you. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist. And for more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.